So here's going to be our video for uh, page two, uh, the second part of, the, of our notes, interpreting scatter plots. Um, so just like when we saw a distribution uh, of variable, uh, a distribution of one variable, we had to describe it uh, using our CSOX. Uh, we have something similar here for describing a, uh, a, in a scatter plot. So as in any graph, we're going to look at the overall pattern. and look for any striking departures. From that pattern, okay? Now notice that I, I have this DSS here, back here, a couple, I don't know, it's been a, been a couple of years ago, I, I made the change to a different acronym, SOFA. Uh, we used to go off DSS, but there wasn't necessarily any nice, neat, anything to remember, so we switched to SOFA. Anyway, that's direction, shape, and strength. Okay, um, SOFA, is, and again, describing this, the SOFA is something similar. Uh, it throws in the other part to that that we need to point out. And as always, everything has to be in context. Okay, so uh, we're looking for sh uh, strength. Usually with strength, we can identify it using the word strong, moderate, or weak. Okay. <clears throat> o is going to be our outliers. I think down below we have a, a better description of it, but we'll write it right in here. Points not fitting pattern. F is going to stand for form. Typically we only have two to choose from. It's going to be linear or curved. And this is going to be the association direction. And uh, typically we have positive, negative, or none. All right, so first of all, the association direction. Uh, two variables are going to be positively associated. I have a positive association when above average values of one tend to accompany above average values with the other and below uh, also tend to occur together. So generally speaking, uh, y increases as x increases. Okay, so uh, as, my, as my, the number of notches of my belt increases, uh, so does my weight, uh, something like that. Both variables are going to increase. Okay, uh, the, more, the more gas I put in my tank, the more that's charged my credit card. Uh, so uh, negative is going to be when one increases while the other one decreases. Okay, so the more people that uh, go in on the pizza, uh, the less I have to pay individually. So um, that would be uh, something that is a negative association. As one variable increases, the other one decreases. Okay, uh, formed. Uh, again, does it appear to be linear or curved? Okay, those are going to be my two. Uh, strength. Uh, if the points cluster uh, around an object, uh, then the association is going to be considered strong. And then if the points are scattered further from the, from the line, the association is going to be weak. Okay. Uh, so again, and we'll get more into strength when we talk about correlation on the next page. Again, if I have something that forms a straight line, I have a linear relationship like that. That is obviously going to be strong. Okay, as I add scatter to it, it becomes weaker. So then, uh, you know, that becomes moderate. Okay, and then the more I add to it, uh, the weaker it gets. So that that we're gone down to none. So we've gone from something that was strong to start with to none. So maybe I better if somebody comes back and sees that as strong, that's not going to be too. It's actually, I'm just going to erase the whole thing. Uh, so. That's what we have for uh, strengths. Uh, outliers or influential points. 
an outlier, an individual value that falls outside the overall pattern, you're going to ask yourself, is there a striking exception to the pattern? An aggression setting an outlier as a data point, and we haven't got into residuals yet, then I'm going to disagree with this statement. Um, but uh, this was in the notes, so I'll keep it there, uh, with a large residual. So an influential point is a point that if we removed it, the slope of the regression line will change. So uh, let's try to, let's try to uh, go through this and talk about influential and not influential. Okay, so uh, I don't know where the best place to, to squeak this is. There isn't much space in around here at all. Okay, um, here's going to be my scatter plot. It's going to be a pretty, you know, right now it is strong. Okay, uh, here I have a point out here. We're going to call this A. Here I have another point in here. We're going to call this B. And we'll hit this harder later. Okay, but because this point... Okay, lies on my line of regression. I don't consider this point to, this point is an outlier. Okay, this point here is also an outlier. Both of them deviate from the overall pattern. My overall cluster, my overall pattern is going to be right here. Okay, so both of them are going to be deviations, uh, an outlier. Now, this one has zero for residual. Sorry, I can't see me pointing. A is going to have no residual, but it's still an outlier. B has a large residual, and it is an outlier as well. So I consider them both to be outliers. One has a large residual, one is not. Now, if we talk about influential point, which is what we're trying to get to here, this point, A, does not change my line of regression because it falls right on it. B is not going to change it either, okay? Uh, I actually put B in the wrong spot. Um, so let's, let's eliminate this. Let's take out, oops, wow, that took out a ton. Can I undo that? There we go. Click on this. I guess I need to put it a smaller. There we go. Okay. So if we take out B and we put that dot out here, there's B out here. So we're going to move B out here. So point B is there now. Okay. Now because point B is there, my line of regression is now going to do something like this. So since it changed the slope of my regression line because we've included B in there, that means it is an influential point. Okay, so B is influential. And we have an activity to work on this. Uh, not influential. Maybe I don't want to write that in red. So, um, let's, uh, let's go back a page and do this, okay? So we want to use, again, we want to use our sofa. So again, we can write it up here um, as far as what we need to be able to include, okay? And again, it's always context. So the relationship between... Uh, body weight and backpack weight. Is, and again, we can continue to write a sentence. We can continue to, we can just, we could write out sofa and just put out, put the parts beside it, okay? But I, when I'm grading it, I'll read your sentence and I will look for those parts, okay? So, first of all, our first S, remember, is strength. So I'm going to call that strong. Is strong with no obvious outliers. So in this one, it'll be a little bit different. Uh, back when we had one variable, we had a test for an outlier, and we would test that, and we would 
we would see if it was an outlier or not. Here, there, we don't have that test. Okay, so we have taken care of strength, we're taking out outliers. The form is linear in a positive direction. And we should also go back and put in the units here, just again, to make sure we're communicating the best we can. And I have included everything we needed to in that description. Okay? So, um... Hmm. Alrighty then. Um, let's, let's talk about outliers for a second again, because I, I looked back at my other notes, and last year when I went through my notes, um, I considered this point here... Uh, to be an outlier, okay? So that's one of those borderline things. Um, you could have said, and I'll change my color to red. I would have not taken off, you said, an outlier at 187 and 30. Okay, I feel like I kind of botched that up, but uh, there we go. So again, uh, we have to be able to look at a look at a distribution and describe it using our sofa. Okay, so if we scroll down here and practice this again, uh, here we have the speed and the time in minutes. So, uh, po actually, four of them: positive or negative relationships. Uh, the minutes spent studying and your exam score. Well, you'd think as your minutes went up, your exam score should go up. So since they both go up, that's positive. Okay. Um, the age of the vehicle and the value of the vehicle. So as my car gets older, the value goes down. So that means one is going up, one is going down. That's going to be a negative relationship. Okay. Age and bone density might be a little bit uh, different. Um, it's going to, it says positive or negative. So as I get older, my bone density tends to decrease um, as well. If we know um, it's going to, that would be a curved relationship. Uh, and then we're right to, we're the, we're to write an example, and I'm not, I'm not too uh, worried about that. So, again, they ask us to, uh, to example three and example four are going to be, again, describing the linear relationship. Okay, if I drew a line down through here like this, that's not a very good straight line, uh, but uh, there we have it. So, again, we're going to describe this relationship with SOFA. Okay, it appears to be strong. There don't appear to be any outliers. And, uh, and again, um, maybe we should, no. Form is uh, going to be linear. And the association direction is negative. Okay, Oop, negative. Um, here, it's a little bit different with Mrs. Sapp and chocolate. A uh, number of chocolates given to Mrs. Sapp in a grade. Um, we don't necessarily have a scatter plot to look at, so this is a table. So we can see that over here the number of chocolates is increasing. Uh, we can see over here that it looks like the grade is also increasing. So again, uh, to get the rest of it, we would probably have to plot this, which I'm not necessarily in the mood to do. Um, but we can see that it's going to be a positive relationship um, I'm not sure the strength. Uh, I just didn't want to take time to do it, and I don't care that you do either. Uh, it's not a big deal. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up, and uh, we'll, work, we'll move on to the next page.